Hello there, welcome back to the channel where I'm making a tactics game. Currently more focused on prototyping a tactics game and creating tools to help with said prototype. This week I wanted to make my character systems and I've made them entirely with scriptable objects as data containers. So if you're here just to see a demo of that, feel free to skip ahead and see that coming up later in the video. But for now, I think I wanted to talk about why use scriptable objects over something else. So what is a scriptable object? A scriptable object is basically an asset that doesn't need to live within your hierarchy. Mostly they're used as data containers, but I have seen examples of them used as other things and I've used it as an event system here in this project, but they are a great way of containing data you want to access often across scenes or even at edit time without worrying about its life cycle since they can be stored as assets inside of your project. They're basically an alternative to singletons if you don't like using singletons. But scriptable objects can fail is when you try to change them from within code, from in your mono behaviors basically. They'll reset to their original values. Well, by default, they don't persist their data. They'll reset to their original values as soon as you exit the scene, close the editor. If you're editing a scriptable object a lot and you want that data to persist, that's where JSON would come in. You would need to serialize your scriptable objects and then output them into a JSON file. All right, so here we are getting down and dirty in the project. So a little nice little demo scene here. This little guy, this is Ted. He likes taking long walks on the beach and killing goblins. Uh, so this is all set up using scriptable objects. Um, we have our character here, Ted up here. And as in our character controller, we have a um, character attached, a char character scriptable object attached. So if we go down here, we can see in our character folder, we have a scriptable object called Ted. Um, it has some character specific things, mainly just their current health and their XP, the level, and then a level modifier and a class. Now, what a class is is just it's just a data container that contains some kind of base stats. So within here we have our base stat container, and it just has some kind of simple statistics that will get affected um, based on level. That will get calculated later on. Because so you, you kind of always want to have a base understanding of what your you kind of always want to know what the base stats are for different calculations throughout the game. And if we run it here, we can see a couple of cool things. So we basically have two scripts reading from our scriptable object. We have Ted and we are generating a bunch of just strings from his character. And we have his little health bar down here that changes as well. One cool thing we can do is that because of how this is all structured, if I just lock Ted in here, you could we could change Ted's class based on just live and it would be calculated. It's pretty simple. So you can see the stats change there, which is pretty cool. And what we can do with these two buttons here is that we can damage poor Ted and we can heal him a little bit. We can also level him up. And the cool thing about this is that there's no direct coupling happening here. Everything is loosely coupled. So what we have, so what we can do is now you wouldn't you wouldn't want to do this and do I don't know why you do this in a game, but if you think about it for other systems this might come into place. Maybe use so if I uncheck this, we can disable Ted. He doesn't even need to exist. But his health bar still exists. Or vice versa, and it still works. There's no coupling, no reliance on each other. Our hierarchy objects are completely independent of our scriptable objects. I also applied a little I can apply buffs to Ted and a debuff to Ted. And that's all pretty cool. Nothing's coupled together, nothing's directly affecting each other. It's using an event system that I got from this dude on a uh, GDC talk, which was pretty, pretty sweet. And yeah, I think it's pretty damn cool. And if you're curious about how this event system works, we have a scriptable object called a just a game event. No variables or anything attached to it at the minute. And within our character, we have this update character script where we have our event attached. And then throughout the, throughout the hierarchy, we, ha we have game event listeners. And so it listens for a specific event and then it just updates. So in our character controller, we're updating the we're updating the stats on the side. It doesn't make a ton of sense here because obviously these are all on the same character, but you know, use a, use a little bit of crit creativity and imagination here. And then down in the health bar here, where is it? Here we have the same thing. We have the game event listener we're listening for the exact same game event. So this one game event affects two different objects within the hierarchy and, they are, and the two objects are not reliant on each other. If you were to do this without game events, these would need to be coupled together or coupled to some kind of character singleton. So this lets you avoid that singleton need altogether, which I think is pretty, pretty sweet. And just in case you wanted to see some of this, some of the code behind scriptable objects, um, disclaimer, 
not, this is not a tutorial. This is just me learning this stuff as I go. So if you do decide to try and copy this approach, just keep that in mind that I'm not an expert. This is just me. I'm just a, I'm just a dude trying to figure some stuff out. Um, so starting with the base container, we have literally it's just a, a an object really. Uh, we have the scriptable object and it just has a couple of floats and there's no logic in here at all. It just literally contains some stats and that's it. Then when we go over to our character data, we have a couple of more cool stuff. So we have some general stuff, which is like name, current health. I have some level stuff, which is our level modifier and level stuff like that. In stat stuff, I tried to be a bit fancy with it. I don't know if this is a good idea or not, but because I'm using I'm using a directory to store all the stats, and then down here, what I'm doing is I loop through all the fields within the base container, and then get a, and then adding them into the um, the stat directory and doing like the level modification as well as they get added in. The reason I did this is because there's no again there's no coupling between these two models. So you know other than just hard coding saying like attack equals base container dot attack now base container can have any i could change base container right now to contain any stat that i want and i will not have to change this file which i think is pretty cool um i got some level you can change level you can fill health and then we can affect a stat so that's basically applying a buff and a debuff where we we modify the stat in some way with these stat modifiers a stat modifier in here is pretty simple we have i right now it's a duration i guess i guess in a tone based game this would be a tone duration rather than a float and that's all it is it's it's kind of like what i described before where it's a value the attribute it's affecting and then how long it lasts for and that's all it is this is the current stat so stat is its name so attack value of the attack has it been modified so is it currently buffed or debuffed and then the stat mod which is the stat modifier which is the buff or debuff basically there's two things i need in life one is a haircut and two is 64 subscribers we did it! 77 subscribers, fresh, new haircut, and all my dreams have come true. You guys, I probably should have set some higher dreams, but you did it. What What do you do next when all your dreams come true? Like, I probably asked for something crazy, like 100 subscribers. In all seriousness, uh, so far, this has been a lot of fun. Um, this is still like a super small channel, but the feedback and the, the chats I've been having with some of you guys has been really great. And yeah, I just, I just wanted to say, Cheers for watching and um, this video was really rushed. I'm, I'm really struggling to get these videos out in less than four hours. <laughs> I don't know why I set myself that deadline, but that's what I'm really trying to do. I'm trying to stick to it, um, but it's it's hard, right? You guys you guys know, you guys know, four hours isn't a lot of time. Um, but uh, yeah, if there is anything I didn't cover well or you have more questions, let me know and I will respond. I always respond to every comment. So um, yeah, thanks guys. Uh, uh, I'll see you in two weeks. Cheers, bye.